In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the intersection of two absolute value curves. In particular, in this first example, we want to find the points of intersection of y equals absolute value of x minus 1 and y equals absolute value of x plus 4. So to start off, let's get a visual idea of what's going on here. Let's plot these curves on a graph. So first of all, looking at that first curve, y equals absolute value of x minus 1, this is just a horizontal shift to the right of one unit. So normally the absolute value graph looks like a V going upwards, and now we're just going to shift that V over one unit to the right. So the bottom of the V is now going to start at an X coordinate of one, and we'll go ahead and draw our V here. There we go, it's shifted over one unit to the right. Now the other absolute value function it's the same idea except we're shifting to the left this time, shifting to the left four units. So we're going to end up starting at negative four. And it'll be that same V shape. Okay, great. So we've got our, our curves plotted and we can see right here there's a point of intersection. And that's the only point of intersection. Uh, these curves have the same slope, so this this line here and this line here are parallel. They're never going to intersect uh, as they go off to the left. And these two branches here are also parallel. They have the same slope of 1. So these are never going to intersect. It's just right in the middle uh, where they cross there. So let's think about how we're going to solve for the points of intersection. We can think about this algebraically. If these two absolute values evaluate to the same number for some input x, then the insides of the absolute values are either of the same sign or they have opposite signs. So we have two possibilities. Either they're the same sign, meaning that the argument of the first absolute value, x minus 1, is just equal to the argument of the second absolute value, x plus 4 or they could be the opposite sign. Just meaning that they're negatives of each other. So we can say uh, the argument of the first absolute value, x minus 1, is equal to negative of the argument of the second absolute value, x plus 4. Uh, we could also say that negative of x minus 1 equals x plus 4. It doesn't really matter which one we put the negative on, because if one is the negative of the other, then the other is also the negative of the first one. So all that matters is we put the negative on one of them. Okay, so we've got two, two possibilities. Either they have the same sign or the opposite sign. But we've only got one point of intersection, so only one of these possibilities is going to actually be true. And to see from the graph which one of these is going to be true, let's look at the branches of the absolute value graphs here. So we're just looking, um, the two branches that we're looking at are this one and this one, just the section between these dotted lines. So between these dotted lines, these two branches, the slopes have opposite sign. We can use that fact to figure out which of these equations is going to give us our point of intersection. Slopes have the opposite sign. Well, in the same sign, the slopes have the same sign. So that's not this one. It's got to be the other one. When the inputs are opposite sign, the slopes also have opposite sign. There's a 1x here, there's a negative 1x here. Um, so this is the equation that we want to solve to get this point of intersection here. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and solve it. So we'll just uh, distribute the negative sign. We get x minus 1 equals negative x minus 4. And then we'll add x to both sides to cancel out that x. We get 2x minus 1 equals negative 4. Then we'll add 1 to both sides to cancel out that negative 1. And we get 2x equals negative 3. And lastly, we just got to divide by 2. We get x equals negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to star that because that's important. Uh, the only thing we need now is y. We want the point of intersection so that 
consists of the x value and the y value. So we can plug in that x into one of these two equations. Uh, why don't we just plug it into the first one? And we find when we plug it into the first one, we find that y equals absolute value of negative 3 halves minus 1. So y equals absolute value. Uh, 1 is just 2 over 2, so that's negative 3 minus 2, so negative 5 over 2. And absolute value of that gets rid of the negative sign, so just y equals 5 over 2. Um, cool, so that's our other point, and now we're going to combine these two points into our final solution. Our point of inter intersection is just negative 3 halves and 5 halves for the y. There we go. There's our point of intersection. Here's a similar kind of problem. We're trying to find the points of intersection of these two absolute value curves. And the first curve can be graphed in a similar way to the previous curves. It's again just a horizontal shift. So this is a shift 5 to the left. So the bottom of our v-shape is going to be at negative 5 here. And we'll just draw a v emanating from there. And the other curve though, this curve is a little bit tougher to graph because not only is there some horizontal shifting going on, there's also some rescaling going on with that 3 coefficient. So the easiest way to figure out where the bottom of this v should go is to set the inside equal to 0 to solve for the x-intercept. We're just setting y equal to 0 and solving for what x gives us that. So we'll say 0 equals negative 3x minus 1. And to solve this, we'll add 3x to both sides. We get 3x equals negative 1. Then divide by 3, get x equals negative 1 third. And there we have it. There's our x-intercept. So we'll go ahead and plot this. We'll say it's right about there, negative 1 third. And now when we draw the v, this 3x, this negative 3x, makes the slope a lot steeper than the previous v, which had a slope of 1. So we're going to angle it upwards a bit more. So it looks something like this. OK, so we can see pretty clearly there are two points of intersection. There's one right here, and there's one right here. And because there are two points of intersection, it, that tells us that both of our algebraic equations, the one with the same sign and the one with the opposite sign, both will give us a solution. Because two equations, if there are two points of intersection, each equation needs to give us a, point, a, uh, a solution here. So let's go ahead and set up our equations and solve them. The equation for the same sign the arguments of the absolute value are just set equal to each other. So we've got x plus 5 from the first absolute value, and that is equal to negative 3x minus 1 from the second absolute value. For the opposite sign, we have x plus 5 equal to the negative of the argument of the other absolute value. So negative of negative 3x minus 1. And now that we've got our equations set up, we can go ahead and solve them. So let's deal with the same sign equation first. We'll add 3x to both sides and get 4x plus 5 equals negative 1. Then subtract 5, get 4x equals negative 6. And then divide by 4, get x equals negative 6 over 4, which can be simplified to x equals negative 3 halves. And let's star this just because that's part of our solution. It's important. But we're not done yet. We have to go and substitute to find the y value because we want points of intersection, not just the x coordinates. We want the y coordinates too. So let's go ahead and substitute this into one of the equations. Let's choose that one because it looks simpler to evaluate. Uh, so we'll plug in negative 3 halves for x. So y equals absolute value of negative 3 halves plus 5. And simplifying this, uh, well, 5 is just 10 over 2, then minus 3 over 2, that just makes 7 over 2. And the absolute of 7, the absolute value of 7 over 2 is just 7 over 2, stays the same. So x is negative 3 over 2, 
y is 7 over 2. That gives us one of the points of intersection. Uh, that gives us this point right here to the left of negative 1 third. So let's label that. This is negative 3 over 2, 7 over 2. Okay, now we have to solve for the other point of intersection, which is just given by our other equation here. So let's go ahead and simplify this equation. x plus 5 equals distributing the negative sign cancels the existing negatives and we just have 3x plus 1 and then we can go ahead and subtract 3x get negative 2x plus 5 equals 1 and then we'll subtract 5 to get negative 2x equals negative 4 and divide by negative 2 to get x equals 2. Okay so that's important that's part of our next solution but we need to plug it in to one of the equations and find the y value. We'll choose this one again just because it's simpler. So y equals absolute value of 2 plus 5. So y equals absolute value of 7. So y just equals 7. So there's our other point of intersection, 2 comma 7. And that's that point right over here. So our overall solution, the points of intersection, are just given by these two uh, points here, negative 3 over 2, 7 over 2, and 2 comma 7. Here's our last example, and this one's a bit different from the previous examples because now we're finding a solution to an equation rather than finding the intersection between two curves. But you'll see we have a graph drawn here, and that kind of indicates that we're going to use what we've learned to solve this equation. And the way we're going to solve this equation is we're just going to set up a, an, an equivalent problem that's similar to the problems that we've seen. This can be restated as find the points of intersection of the two functions, one of them is the left hand side, y equals absolute value of 5x minus 6, and the other one is the right hand side, y equals negative 5x plus 2. So this, this problem here, solving this equation, is equivalent to finding the points of intersection of these two curves. Actually, it's a bit easier because we just care about the x-coordinates here. We won't have to go back and, and solve for the y's. Uh, so we're going to approach this just like the previous problems then. Uh, so we'll, we'll draw graphs of these two curves and, and find the points of intersection. Let's deal with this curve first. So this is 5x minus 6. Uh, this is a bit tough to tell what the uh, where, where the v starts because this is a horizontal shift, but also some rescaling going on. So like we did in the previous example, uh, we're just going to set the inside of the absolute value to zero to figure out where the x-intercept is. So we've got zero equals 5x minus 6, and subtract over the 5x, and we get negative 5x equals negative 6, then divide by negative 5, and we get x equals 6 fifths. So this graph has an x-intercept that's, why don't we say, around here, on the positive side, 6 fifths. And since the slope is 5, it's going up kind of steeply. So we'll make it angled upward pretty steep. Okay, now let's go ahead and take care of our second equation. Let's graph that. And that's going to be a very similar thing. We're just going to find the x-intercept. So set 0 equals negative 5x plus 2, add 5x, get 5x equals 2, then divide by 5 and get x equals 2 fifths. Uh, so that tells us that the graph starts roughly around here, x is 2 fifths, and again slope uh, negative 5, we're looking at the magnitude 5, it's the same as the other one, so it's just as steep as the other graph. Okay, so we've got a kind of similar situation uh, to the for very first example. We've got two absolute value graphs. We see one point of intersection, and we know that these two branches uh, going left have the same slope. So 
these two aren't ever going to intersect. And these two branches going right also have the same slope of 5, so they won't ever intersect either. It's just this point of intersection that we need to think about. So with that in mind, let's set up our algebraic equations here. One is the same sign equation, and the other one is the opposite sign. For the same sign equation, we just go ahead and set the, set the arguments of the absolute values equal to each other. So 5x minus 6 equals negative 5x plus 2. And then for the opposite sign, we make them have the opposite sign. We make one of them have a, a negative. So 5x minus 6 equals negative of that other argument negative of negative 5x plus 2. Okay, and now we just need to determine which one of is going to actually give us our solution. And we can do that by looking at the graph. We're just looking at these two branches here between the dotted lines. Between the dotted lines here, uh, these branches have the opposite slope. One is going up, one is going down. So we want to choose the equation uh, where one of the x coefficients is positive and one is a negative. Here we've got a positive, here we've got a negative. Uh, so this looks good, but the opposite sign, here we've got a positive and the negative is gonna cancel out that negative five and we'll just have five x here and five x here. So we don't need this opposite sign equation. We're just worried about the same sign equation. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and solve this equation. Uh, we can add 5x to both sides to cancel out that negative 5x, and we'll get 10x minus 6 equals 2. And then we'll add 6 to both sides, get 10x equals 8, and then divide by 10 to get x equals 8 over 10, or more simply, x equals um, 4 fifths. There we go. So that there is our solution to the original equation. We don't have to solve for y because the original equation didn't ask for y. Y was just something we introduced to make this problem look like something we've seen before. So there we go, we're done. In the future, we'll also learn how to find points of intersection of absolute value functions which are shifted up or down by some amount.